Now that's not to say that as laymen we shouldn't try to be well informed or to recognize that there are areas of expertise that matter that we don't possess. For instance, in March I was down in Washington for the 12th International Climate Change Conference put on by the Heartland Institute and there was a presentation by Lord Christopher Moncton, a remarkable character and a brilliant mathematician. And the board was covered in equations demonstrating what he believed was a critical flaw that he'd found in the IPCC climate models. And when he was finished, I said to him that it reminded me of a story about G.K. Chesterton attending a Eucharistic Congress in Dublin at which there was an hour-long speech in Gaelic. And when it was done, Chesterton said to the guy next to him, the finer points of that discourse escaped me. But as a historian, I agree with the authors of The Neglected Son that methodologically speaking, the past is the key to the present and the future. I'm a geologist. And the one thing that we miss out on in looking at climate change is the past. So, one more point well worth noting about this chart is that it's incompatible with alarmist claims that we're going to experience a runaway greenhouse effect if carbon dioxide should reach, say, 500 parts per million in the atmosphere. So you can get to a situation where it just, the oceans will begin to boil and the planet becomes uh, so hot that the ocean ends up in the atmosphere. And that happened to Venus. Another thing that irritates me about this whole debate is people keep talking about this unprecedented experiment we're doing. We're adding more CO2 than we've had in a hundred thousand years or something like that. I mean, what an absurd thing. The Earth is, you know, four billion years or more old. The Earth has done the experiment with much more CO2 many, many times. In fact, most of the time CO2 levels have been in thousands of parts per million, not 400 parts per million. There was no runaway greenhouse effect. There was no tipping point. The Earth was never even close to being like Venus, and there's no way it could be. So the experiment has been done, and the answer is that the biosphere, at least, loves to have more CO2. So what are we worried about? Now that's not to say that a theory that could explain all this natural variability couldn't also suggest that man's recent behavior could have a strong impact. But it is to say that a theory that cannot explain all this natural variability cannot tell us anything reliable about climate, in the past or in the present. And the alarmists, with their theories that something unprecedented and disastrous is going on, ignore or wave off all this evidence. And that's not science.